This year's plenary session features MIT professor Moonji Bawendi, who's here to talk about all things quantum dots. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So my understanding is that a quantum dot is a nanoscale particle, and when you think about its size, it's like comparing the Earth to a soccer ball, or outside the US, a football, and then a similar ratio between that soccer ball and the quantum dot. So I'm really interested to hear, how do you go about creating a high quality crystal that's that small? And I know you won a Nobel Prize, so you're the perfect person to ask about this. Yeah, so it's all about separating the nucleation and the growth. Okay. So you want to make really tiny seeds that are maybe a, a few tens of atoms. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you stop creating the seeds and then you grow on top of the seeds. And if your conditions are right, then the growth is uniform and all the seeds grow to be the same size eventually. It's kind of like snowflakes, you know, we, we're in Boston here, it snows in the winter. Right. When it's humid and right around freezing point, all the snowflakes come out large. If it's really, really cold, all the snowflakes come out really tiny. It's the same principle. The snow nucleates in the clouds, makes tiny seeds of ice, it comes through the atmosphere, and the snow flake builds up using water molecules from the atmosphere. If it's very wet, they get big. If it's dry, they stay small. Same okay. idea, except now at the nanoscale. All right. Yeah, so I, I know that there's been all sorts of applications of this research, um, from LED lights to, to healthcare applications. How does it feel to have your work have so many applications, and, and what are a few of your favorites? Yeah, it's, kind of, it's really amazing, because when we started this field, you know, 35 years ago or so, um, we had no idea that these applications would come about. It wasn't until the 2000s, really, that the applications started coming. Sure. Um, it was really based on curiosity science initially. You know, what happens when you go from atoms to the solid state? What happens in the middle? And then interesting things happen, and then when interesting things happen, then you can apply them to, to different things. I think my favorite application really is the displays. The, uh, yeah. you know, the big TVs, the micro displays that are coming on, online also that are going to have quantum dots in them. I went to a, an international display conference, you know, consumer electronics type of conference, and it seemed like every, every company that was producing displays was using quantum dots in them. It's sort of like, wow, <laughs> this is really amazing. <laughs> Did you tell them all, hey, I made those quantum dots you're using? Uh, they already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what do you think is the future of the field of quantum dots? What are some big mysteries that are still left to solve? I think um, the, the range of materials, uh, getting to 3.5 materials is really still hard, but I think 3.5s are really important, like gallium arsenide or gallium nitride type materials, uh, the chemistry of those. Um, and then uh, the stability of the dots and you know, their extreme conditions, I think that's still a challenge to be faced. My favorite application going forward is in quantum optics, using the quantum dots and quantum optics and figuring how to place them in different ways and how to have them interact with light and electric fields so that you have quantum light coming out of them. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us here. My pleasure. And, yeah. I, and I hope you have a great rest of your week here at MRS. Yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs>